for joining our Tech Talk on Remote Teams. My name is Ritian Bayada, and it is my pleasure to welcome Chris Arms, Chief Information Officer at GIG, and Gilbert Gallia, Chief Operating Officer at Castile. So uh, let's kick off our discussion with the first question. How can an organization ensure readiness to transition to remote working? Starting off with Gilbert. So thanks, Ritian, and thanks, Chris, for joining as well. Uh, I believe um, at the very top of the agenda for an organization wishing to transition to remote first, I would put support from management, right? Um, all the way from executive committee, down to the line management of the organization because in the end it is a matter of trust whether management feels that they have the right people on board whether they feel they are autonomous enough self-driven enough and even mature enough to work effectively despite the location right and also whether they are willing to measure the performance by output rather than by bench time yeah However, having said that, I believe some tools actually come to the rescue um, here, even uh, in terms of facilitating such a transition. And such tools provide communication, agile sprint planning and delivery functionality, even brainstorming functionality with online whiteboards, process diagramming software. And such tools can facilitate, you know, the collaboration of teams, um, even if geographically dispersed, basically. Also, some organizations are successfully delivering a number of online programs to support remote workers, right? Um, that includes online training, remote onboarding. Of course, onboarding is already a challenge if done on site, let alone um, remote. But with the right people, uh, it works. And I tell you this from experience because we've done it a number of times. And also some remote wellness programs uh, would be advisable as well. For example, at Castile, we do our uh, Friday yoga sessions which help us unwind after a hectic week and start the next week um, fresher than before, right? One tip I would give to any organization uh, wishing to proceed, you know, with becoming a remote first organization is to map out the current state with the journey it wants to embark on, and which would start with mapping out your mission critical and business critical tasks and their interdependencies, you know, while challenging the status quo. And I believe this is very important because you would need to optimize your structure, optimize even your roles, right, with remote in mind. There is an element of coaching that management needs to do, and that includes shifting teams from relying on shoulder tapping, you know, for requests, um, even raising your voice to prioritize your demands, or even overhearing conversations in the open plan to be in the know, shift that to a more online collaborative setup with more frequent but shorter strategic and team updates to increase increase the social contact points also emphasize the importance of emotional intelligence and interpreting that within the team and pushing for video calls to overcome barriers to the unspoken and body language due to the lack of physical presence thank you gilbert over to chris yeah i mean i think a lot of what gilbert said is you know you know I would echo very much echo that. I think the other the other big part of this that's missed is, is infrastructure. Um, you, you know, it, it's we all saw that there was a lot of companies around the world who felt they were work from home when the pandemic started. You know, eighteen months ago, uh, panicked and went, "Well, we can't really work from home because we've never actually." It was it was described, I think, as the biggest work from home experiment in history um, at, at, at one point. Uh, you know, the challenge is that you've got to build a, you've got to build an infrastructure and building a work from home infrastructure is not simply a case of sticking a VPN somewhere and hoping it all works right you've got to have an IT team that can support that and that's and that's a real challenge you've got to engineer work from home processes not just from a people perspective in terms of all of the you know the social not losing the social events not losing the social contact but you've got to engineer it into the way you where you run your business your tools have got to work work from home um you you know the basics have got to work calendars email video conferencing you've got to have enough bandwidth and enough capacity it's amazing the number of people that realized they didn't have enough capacity um at home we you know when they were at home with two kids and the kids were streaming netflix all of a sudden video conference calls start to start to disappear so you've got to build a lot of functionality and you've got to use the technology in a clever way right Gone are the days where you need to run your own email infrastructure or your, or your own shared folder infrastructure. You know, 
Google provide it with G Suite, Microsoft provide it with Online O365. You need to leverage the technology infrastructure in the same way you leverage the people tools that allow you to do remote working. You need to le le leverage the operational tools. Um, the other challenge is onboarding and offboarding, right? Um, uh, most people had never done re true remote onboarding until the pandemic hit. Um, and remote onboarding is really, really difficult. Uh, you know, just simple things like getting a laptop to somebody fully configured so that when they plug it in, it actually works and they can, and they can be productive from day one. How do you how do you get them involved in the company culture? That's something that's really, really difficult to do remotely. Um, and I think that's going to become a fact of life going forward. Right. We're going to have more and more people spread around the world. The concept of 300 people being in an office is probably in reality finished. Um, although if you talk to you know, the likes of Goldman Sachs et al in the world, they will tell you differently. But I, you know, I, I fundamentally believe that the, the world is digitizing so fast now that it, it can't continue in that vein. And we've all got to be prepared to deal with people wherever they are. Um, and equally challenge, equally challenge is offboarding, right? What happens if people leave? How do you get the technology back from people? How do you disconnect people from the infrastructure? How, and how do you do both onboarding and offboarding in a respectful way? It's really difficult, uh, and you've got and bringing people into a company culture where they haven't experienced it is very difficult. Um, and leaders and training your leaders in remote management is really, really important. You know, somebody once said to me, "If somebody works thirty feet away from you, they may as well be fit three hundred miles." Um, so, how do we train leaders to be good remote managers? Um, that's and we've got to train them remotely, don't forget. We can't sit them in a room and train them because we can't often get them together now. So there are, there's massive people and massive process challenges, as you say. Um, and just how we do all of that is, it's hard, right? Because human beings are naturally social and social and social animals. Um, and, and it makes it very, very difficult. Thank you, Chris. Um, my second question is, how would a company go about maintaining its security stance when onboarding remote software teams? Uh, starting off with Chris this time. Yeah, I mean, you've got to, back to kind of what we were, I was just saying, right? You've got to have a good set of processes that are, you know, work in the office before you can actually do them out of the office. Um, you know, you've got to have a good information security policy um, that functions in the office and functions across your business. If you don't do that, um, it's not going to work remotely. Uh, and those information security policies have got to be built into your infrastructure so that your infrastructure will work remotely. Uh, and you've got to, again, you've got to educate people. You've still got to do, just because somebody's working from home doesn't mean they don't need information security training. They, they absolutely do. But just because they don't work from home, they don't need phishing training. But they need all of, you know, they, they need secure coding practices. So they need all of these things um, built in. You've got to, security's got to be built into your business's DNA for it to be effective. Uh, and then if you build it into your business's DNA, as you naturally become a more disparate organization, uh, it will follow. And, you know, we, I was talking again previously about onboarding and offboarding, key tenor of tenors of security. If you can't onboard and offboard people's security, you know, you don't want you don't want to have people lay, leave and then two years later realize there's 200 user accounts you haven't deleted. That, that's a security disaster. Um, but making sure that your systems are all tied together so that you can do this shared onboarding and offboarding is really important. Um, and you've still got to be able to work with partners. Uh, you know, we work together as a business and we, you know, we were saying before we started this, how we haven't actually managed to get in a room probably for the last 18 months, but we still have to trust each other from a security perspective. So that has to happen as well. So you have to find a way to do that business to business to security when, when companies, when, when companies are remote. Thank you, Chris. Gilbert? Uh, totally aligned um, with Chris's input here. Um, I would put as well security awareness at the center here and even make sure that we cover um, through our security awareness campaigns, particularly securing the home network, right? So as we all know, remote working is not a new thing. I mean, we come from the technical um, uh, side of the world, right? And 15 years ago, my application support engineering teams were connecting from home, supporting, you know, 24 by seven mission critical systems in the odd hours, right? But with the advent of remote first, now we have a different reality where non-technical people 
are choosing to be remote, you know, and, and uh, choosing through the organization, of course, to operate effectively from there, but they do not necessarily have the right knowledge to secure that home network, which now is an extension to the enterprise network and the corporate infrastructure. Right? So I would definitely suggest that security awareness programs cover this area too. Uh, what may, may be a little bit more practical as well in what can be what can be done really so information security teams have a gatekeeper in the VPN client right that they use so one suggestion would be that such a VPN um, software would contain for example security connectivity policies which would disallow any connections to happen between remote devices to the enterprise infrastructure unless some prerequisites are in place other things that can be done is the use of virtual desktops on the cloud where uh, you know you have your contained sandbox uh, where the where the user has all the access into the organization and the remote devices whether they are enterprise owned or whether they are personal owned or personally sorry um, they would be used as remote consoles you know into the virtual desktop other things um, as chris uh, pointed out earlier uh, would be harnessing the security of the cloud i mean the the global cloud providers have done huge investments in making sure that they have industry grade security stance you know across the operations and so definitely riding on top of that would be a good idea especially for a remote first organization rather than going for on premises infrastructure yeah so those are some of the things that uh, I believe companies can do, you know, to make sure that they keep their operations safe, even though um, extending to the uh, remote teams. Thanks, Gilbert. Um, and my last question for today, um, with today's relentless push towards digital transformation across sectors, how can tech enable continuous delivery through the extended organization? Gilbert. So, uh, digital transformation uh, requires definitely top-tier software talent, right? Um, and there are structural changes, I believe, across geographies that everyone is experiencing um, uh, to deliver such a transformation program. It also requires a kind of parallel organization as well, uh, which, of course, ensures that part of the organization is running the core business and making sure that you are excelling in the market and uh, even against competitors right but the other part of the organization is having um uh, is focused purely on transforming the business into the new way of working we call it changing the heart of a running athlete right um, just to give you an idea so this of course in, in proves that the importance of tapping into a global gig workforce which can scale up and down in tune with business requirements is crucial for such a digital transformation. We call this the extended organization here. So um, something which is mainstream today, but I think worth discussing is the agile methodology, right? Because agile provides us with a means to chunk down business problems into smaller manageable chunks. And the focus here is to provide fully consumable incremental releases that are reusable, modular and future proof. And these are critical for um, digital transformation programs because in reality, we rarely know everything that needs to be known at the point of conceiving, you know, in developing um, solutions to our business. And the key technology that allows us to do digital transformation in an agile way is CICD the CICD pipeline, right? CI stands for continuous integration, which allows engineers to integrate their platform with higher frequency. And thus they are continuously addressing the most costly software problem, which is integration, right? That's where most of the problems are. And this, uh, you know, we've done right. Um, uh, it would allow less effort on software build and integration and makes the bugging much easier and faster. Continuous delivery, the CD part of CI-CD, focuses on the packaging and the orchestration of deployments of releases in a software-defined manner. So if done right, the CI-CD pipeline allows us to make sure the software changes reaches production much faster right, and in a more controlled manner. And it allows us for end users to immediately provide feedback on the experiences they have with such changes that we're releasing. Okay, this is very important, I believe, for digital transformation programs. And some CI CD tools which are available, and some of them are quite mainstream as well. And we have Jenkins, uh, Team City, GitLab, Circle CI, and all have their own strengths in terms of integration, built in features, the ease of use, and also underlying OSs that they um, support. Yeah? 
other tools that uh, are being used today um, which support us in this journey is containerization right which allows developers to focus on the quality of their code irrespective of the target environment that they're going to deploy to and this of course enables remote teams to work in their own isolated environment without necessarily requiring on-site knowledge of the ecosystem and the underlying infrastructure it also helps in increasing availability flexibility and scalability and here are tools like docker google copernatus as well which um, supports docker images amazon ecs uh, lexi and others you know are, are are available in this space finally um, i'll also mention infrastructure as code as one of the tools which enables the remote organization as well in supporting such programs because IAC, Infrastructure as Code, automates the commissioning of IT infrastructure through predefined configurations, right, which allows us to deploy infrastructure with speed and remotely, right? So sysops and systems engineering team do not necessarily have to be on site anymore, right? It also opens up other opportunities, like, uh, for example, automatically scaling infrastructure based on the load, right? And here we have tools like Terraform, Ansible, Puppet, and Amazon's Cloud Formation, for example, for, to mention just some. So summing up, I think this gives us some understanding on what stacks are available out there that tech teams can utilize to facilitate collaboration to the extended organization and address the challenges that digital transformation programs bring in, right? while ensuring that the delivery of high quality business solutions remains with speed and in a consistent and controlled manner. Thank you, Gilbert. Chris? It's, you know, as Gilbert said, you know, we've, we've got to build the processes, we've got to build the technology framework to make this happen. We've got to have the right people in place to do it as well. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about in this session about having the right people, the right processes. Um, you know, some people, frankly, work better in an office environment and some people, frankly, work better in a, um, in a, um, in a, in a remote environment. And we need to uh, recognize the fact that people work you know, differently in different environments. Uh, and as a result, uh, you know, we need to ensure that the right people uh, are in the right roles. Uh, you know, we might have people who who have been who were great in an office environment, but actually don't work really well in a, in a remote environment. So no matter how good the tools and the processes are, um, if we've got the wrong person in the wrong job, we've got to you know we've got to make sure we've got to find ways to help them be successful. Um, because they may well be great engineering talent, but they may well not, you know, be suited to the remote way of working. So we've got to build the right tools, the right people and the right processes to build the whole infrastructure. And, and everybody expects a tech organization to just be able to do this stuff because everybody goes, well, tech's been working remotely, you know, for, for 30 years. And yes, tech has been working remotely, you know, since forever. But the challenge with that is that, um, we've always had the option to go back to the office um, and we've always had you know we've always had the situation where it's really gone horribly wrong on a deployment to get all the devops team in a conference room get them drawing on a whiteboard we can't necessarily do that anymore you know the pandemic's yes a big part of that but also now because the world is digitizing so fast people are spread around the planet um, so we've got to find a way to have that virtual whiteboard session. So we've got to change a lot of things in the way we operate. We've got to have a, a we've got to have a better than we had tool chain. Um, we've got to have better people. We've got to have better better processes, and we've got to and we've got to bring all of that together. Um, and we've got to recognise the fact is that um, you know we can have the greatest CI/CD pipeline in the world, but if the guy in Kosovo versus the guy in in California, the two of them can't use it to collaborate together or can't integrate source code together shared. We've got it wrong as an organization. Uh, and, and then and we need to figure out how to bring those, bring all of that together. So it's a real, it's a real technical challenge. It's about the right people, the right tools, the right processes and, and, and bringing it all together and recognizing that, um, you know, this is, you know, as I say, this is, this is proved to be the biggest work from home experiment in history. And, you know, some people have done it really well and some people have done it really badly and a lot of people have and everybody has to admit they've learned a lot anybody who says they haven't learned anything um clearly hasn't lived the same last 18 months that we've all lived <laughs> <laughs> thank you chris um thank you both for joining me for taking the time to uh, join this discussion and sharing your expertise on such an important topic in today's workplace thank you too. thanks